Hi everyone, this is Joe from Gentleman Stationer and welcome back to the next installment in our series, How to Fill a Fountain Pen. This week we're going to be talking about vacuum fillers and I'll be careful to distinguish vacuum fillers from a vacuumatic, which are two different filling systems. The vacuumatic filling system is a vintage style filling system that you very rarely see in a modern pen. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I think there's still some companies out there that make them. But uh, we'll talk about that in a later video that focuses on vintage filling systems in particular. What I'm going to talk about today is your modern vacuum filler. Um, and the two pens I have to use as examples of that are the Twisby Vac 700R in Iris and the Novelure or Narwhal, um, however you pronounce it, Original Plus, which is the new, the new version. Um, and I'll fill the narwhal first. Um, these fountain pens are really popular because they also have um, a very high ink capacity. The, the vacuum fillers use more or less the entire barrel as the ink reservoir. So you, you essentially have most of the barrel available to you to hold the ink in the pen. Now, you might wonder, isn't that going to cause the same issues as you might have with an eyedropper, namely with burping or as the pen gets low on ink with the air heating up and expanding and pushing ink out of the nib into the cap, especially when you're traveling. The question is no, not for the most part, because like the Jap Japanese style eyedropper, the vacuum filler also has the valve and seal system. So when you fill the pen, what you're gonna do is you're going to pull the rod out dip the section of the pen and the nib into the ink and press the rod down in a slow, steady motion so that when the seal passes, um, passes the little notch in the barrel, it's going to create a vacuum and it's going to suck ink up into the barrel. So you'll close the piston knob after you fill, but um, once you write through that initial fill of ink in the section, the rest of the ink is going to be sealed off in the barrel by that valve. So what you'll have to do, like with a Japanese style eyedropper, is for longer writing sessions, open that up a little bit to allow the ink to flow. So that you might think, is that going to be an inconvenience? It can be. Um, it's one more step you do have to take to write with a pen and to use all that ink that's in the barrel. However, at the same time, it's a safeguard if you're traveling. It's, it's like also like the, the Pilot Custom 823 operates on the same principle. You can see that that one, if you want to write and fill that up, you're going to have to open the, this one's filled up. If you're going to write with it and use the ink in the barrel, you're going to have to open up the blind cap a little bit. It, it serves as a safety valve um, for travel. So these are great pens to take on an airplane. Um, due to the existence of that safety valve, all that ink is going to be kept in the barrel. It's not going to reach the feed and it's certainly not going to burp into the cap um, due to changes in air pressure and uh, just the pen getting jostled around in your bag. So that's kind of, uh, that, that's the theory behind it. I'm going to show you how it works in practice with, um, with an ink bottle here. Um, whenever you fill one of these pens, they do have, because they, they hold a lot of ink, you're dealing with a pen that expels air from the barrel, creates a vacuum. It can result in a little bit of a mess when you're filling them. So always have a towel um, nearby. I'm going to open up this ink, which is Caron Dash Chromatics Magnetic Blue. And both of these pens fill in the same way, the Twisby and the Narwhal. And I guess I'll fill the Twisby because I showed you guys the Narwhal and how that worked. So works on the same principle. Pull the piston rod out, take your ink bottle, insert nib and section, and one steady stroke on the, on the piston rod, and there it goes. Now, screw that up. You should be ready to go. And just to show how the, the novel or I really like that color, by the way, the, the Ocelotus Gold. 
there's very subtle swirls of color in the um, in the clear acrylic, which makes which which gives it a nice effect. This pen is going to fill in exactly the same way. You can hear the air being pressed down into the bottle. It's going to fill too. Now, if you use a pressurized inkwell, like the Visconti Traveling Inkwell or the Paniter equivalent, you can get more ink into the barrel. I mean, that's a lot of ink. Um, that's going to last you for quite some time. You can also pump it twice, maybe get a little bit more. I change ink fairly frequently, so I don't, I'm not going to try to, to fill it up more than that. That's about as much as I normally, I normally use, and that will last me quite some time. So there you go. That's how you fill a vacuum filler fountain pen. So stay tuned for the rest of the series. I think I may have one or two more of these videos on how to use the various fountain pen filling systems. I'm also going to walk through uh, in the future some of the vintage filling systems, namely lever fillers, aerometric fillers like you'd see in a vintage Parker 51, and maybe even a vacuumatic. Um, as I as I locate some more of those pens in my collection, it's been a while since I've pulled out my vintage pens. But until now, um, Check out the other content I have on both the blog and on the YouTube channel, and be sure to give us a follow because it helps us reach new, it re helps us reach a new audience and expand um, and expand our company. Thank you.